sophomore year of college, I got a surprise phone call from my father. Want a date for Friday night, he asked. The jazz pianist, Dave McKenna, would be playing at a club in Providence, and my father had two tickets. He would drive up from New York and be outside my dorm at 6. Dave McKenna was a legend, my father had often told me. Just listen to his unusual sense of time, he'd said a few months earlier, after getting a new McKenna album. Do you hear it? Yep, I said, and waited for that inevitable moment when he would lift the needle from the LP and place it down ever so carefully so I could hear a particular bridge again. Glenn Miller, Duke Ellington, Benny Goodman, Bob Wilbur, my father loved them all. I heard them all, and I heard about them all, without really listening. My father's music was ancient and musty, with songs you could sing along to only by muttering ba-ba-ba-ba or do-do-do-do, which he never hesitated to do when one of his favorites came on the radio. At 6 o'clock, just as promised, Dad rolled up to my dorm. The jazz club was small and dark, the audience old. Slumped at the piano, McKenna was a wide-shouldered guy in a suit and tie. With thinning hair, he looked more like a washed-out insurance salesman than a legendary jazz pianist. McKenna was impressive on the piano, but I found the music slippery, difficult to latch onto, endless. My father was enraptured. After the second set, my dad walked up to the piano to talk to Mr. McKenna and buy an album for me. He beamed when his idol smiled my way and autographed the cover. I thanked them both for the album, which I later slid onto a shelf in my dorm room and never played. Two years ago, decades after I lost track of that neglected album, my son Johnny started playing piano. His repertoire was typical for a young teenager, a lot of Billy Joel and some Beatles. It was not my father's favorite music, but he loved to listen to Johnny play anyway, even when he got too weak to come downstairs to sit by the piano. And then this autumn, a few months after my father died, Johnny's piano teacher taught him some jazz tunes, Miles Davis and Thelonious Monk, and introduced him to Duke Ellington, Art Tatum, and Dick Hyman. Johnny practiced jazz chords and riffs, learned blues scales, and started improvising the music flowing from him with a seemingly effortless joy. One evening, while Johnny was playing the piano and I was making dinner in the kitchen, I realized, I know this music. This is the soundtrack of my childhood. I followed the intertwining strands of melody and stayed with the songs as they rose and wandered and came back around again. The rhythms were intoxicating, the bridges artful. How had I not heard any of it before? Why had my father's passion for jazz, so constant and true, touched me only when he was gone? I read in the paper recently that scientists have recorded the sound of two black holes colliding a billion light years away, and this is evidence that space and time are interwoven, as Einstein said. I don't understand this, but I would like to believe that time rippling and bending means that when Johnny and I listen to one of my father's old Dave McKenna recordings, my father is hearing it too and that we are all in the exact same moment, happy and slightly astonished, as the melody and the technique and the magic take us away. Thank you.